and um, well, everybody's muted. So sorry, guys, but for the next half an hour, you're going to have to listen to me. Um, <laughs> all right, but here we go. We've been talking, you know, for um, I don't know a couple of weeks now about spiritual fathering, um, and again, just to to kind of refresh the the, the reason is because there there is being a lot said. Uh, and has been for a long time, actually, about sonship, about spiritual sonship, about being sons of the house, all those kinds of things. Um, uh, but there hasn't been as much um, really um, fleshed out about, not, not just about the, our Heavenly Father's heart, but about spiritual fathering. In other words, the relationship of earthly spiritual fathers with their spiritual sons. And, um, and so this has been stirring in me for quite a long time, actually. Um, and um, and I used to, I used to uh, with these kind of stirrings and the amount of material that um, God had given me, uh, of course, I, you know, I used to be the leader of the church and so I would just preach series for weeks or for months sometimes. Um, uh, Glenn's got that privilege now. So um, I'm thanking God for Zoom night after night. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm grateful for everyone who comes on night after night. And of course, many of us can't because... Some of us got other really important things to do, like going fishing and things like that. Hey, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and others have got other Zoom things they're doing. And, um, and, and you know, the, the great thing about this season is that the, um, you know, the activity and administration and advancement of the kingdom um, has continued unabated. You know, people have just um, been able to adjust and do things differently. And, and so... Um, you know, Cornelius Networks, you know, they get out in the streets and they're winning people to Christ and they're baptizing them in water and getting them baptized in the Holy Spirit and discipling them and getting them out on the streets to do the same. Um, and, and that's exciting, you know. Um, and we're finding that um, in the nations too that, um, you know, um, some of you won't know this, but um, thousands and thousands of dollars have been given by people in Kingdom Life Church and others in uh, in the network uh, here in Australia and also in the US, um, you know, for victims of disaster, particularly COVID-19. And, um, you know, we, we've been able to to actually put it in the words of uh, some of the sons in the, in the nations. We've been able to save the lives of many, many pastors and their families and um, people in their, in their churches in a whole bunch of nations, which is just unbelievable, you know. And um, uh, so... Um, it's just incredible what God's doing um, because the kingdom doesn't need a building and uh, the kingdom doesn't need a crowd. <laughs> you know, buildings and crowds are good. Got no problem with that as long as it's kingdom activity. Um, but, um, you know, where, where there's a kingdom mindset and a kingdom perspective, it is absolutely amazing what God is doing. And um, uh, and, and just so thankful to, to God for that. But, of course, this week I've been speaking very much about... Um, you know, a father, you know, fathers in the future, you know, how a father um, is always ahead of the sons and uh, because the heavenly father is ahead of spiritual fathers. And um, so we talked about um, spiritual fathers hearing uh, in advance for their sons. We talked about spiritual fathers seeing into the future with because of the revelation of the spirit of God. Uh, we spoke last night about spiritual fathers planning ahead so, they, so that the sons can go on the journey into the future that God has with them. And tonight I want to talk about um, uh, that a father speaks ahead. He speaks in advance or he speaks of things in the future. And um, so obviously a father is going to tell, a spiritual father is going to tell his spiritual sons um, what he's hearing from the heavenly father. And, um, um, and, and a father is going to also speak to the sons about what God's showing him, what the Holy Spirit's revealing. Um, and, and a father is going to discuss the plans and strategies uh, particularly with the mature sons, but, you know, even with the immature sons. You know, I remember when my, my, my own natural sons in the nuclear family, um, you know, were very little. And um, if, if there was a change coming in, in the family, if we we're moving somewhere or, or whatever, you know, there'd be the family meetings uh, and all those kind of things. And, um, you know, I, I must say I became pretty big on family meetings over the years uh, with my kids uh, because um, cause, um, they'll, they'll only... Um, you can only go together as a unit if, if everyone's on board, but it's not just about selling the idea. It's about the fact that um, the sons have got to actually not just catch it, but contribute to it. And, uh, it, and even the immature sons can do that, you know. Um, 
See, um, if God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through our immature sons, natural and spiritual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and so, um, so tonight, how about we go to John 14? Um, the Lord hasn't given me anything about Abraham for tonight, but um, we're going to talk about how Jesus uh, spoke to his disciples here in John chapter 14. It's the first 11 verses. And... Um, uh, and much of this passage has been uh, interpreted and implemented or applied in all kinds of ways. Um, so, you know, in talking about spiritual fathers, uh, what it means is we've got to p kind of put, the, put a pause button on all those other ideas that we've had or interpretations or applications of some of the verses in this passage of Scripture because we're not going to highlight just one verse out of the context. We're going to deal with the whole story. and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and and going to deal with it, um, you know, from the perspective of uh, the heavenly Father dealing with His Son Jesus, and then Jesus dealing with His sons, the disciples who became the apostles. And so, um, so John fourteen verse one, let not your heart be troubled. <clears throat> so this is a father talking, because fathers say to their kids, um, "Look, don't worry, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid. You know, I've got this." <laughs> All right. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So, of course, um, those of us who grew up in the days when, um, you know, we, we were looking for the rapture every day, um, you know, th this is the misty-eyed stuff, you know. So, please, can you wipe your eyes and come on, on the journey with me tonight? <laughs> Thanks so much. That's great. <laughs> All right. So, then he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, then, there you may be also, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. So here we are. Jesus is speaking about the future to his, his, um, his disciples, his, his, um, <clears throat> his sons, you know. And uh, firstly, he's saying, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't, um, don't allow things to press in on you because I'm going ahead of you, and I'm going to tell you what it looks like. <laughs> what an amazing thing. <clears throat> And so, of course, he says, well, uh, the future is about my father. That's actually what he's saying. All right? In my father's house, there are many mansions. Where's Jesus going? He's going back to his father. Uh, touched on this last night at one point about John 13, uh, verses 1 to 3. You know, and um, uh, some people have lost what I'm about to say in the fact that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. But this is the context for the washing of feet is that Jesus knew that he'd come from the Father, that the Father put all things into his hand, and that he was going back to the Father. And um, so, so this, um, this sense of um, um, my origins are in my Father, who I am and what I have is all from him, and my future and my destiny uh, and, and my destination at the end is back with my Father. Uh, this is actually what it's all about. And so what Jesus is talking to uh, his disciples, who he was a father to. Um, <clears throat> and he says, don't let your heart be troubled. You know, th this is a kingdom of peace. You know, in other words, don't forget, my father's actually established a covenant of peace with, with you, you know. Um, but then he says, well, this is what I can see, and I'm going to tell you all about it today. Um, there's many mansions in my father's house. In other words, um, if the destination is the father, there's way more in him than we've ever conceived of. That's really what Jesus is, is saying. He's speaking about the future. The future is the heavenly father. And so um, the future is not just about a place called heaven. Heaven's about the father. <laughs> um, we know the Bible says that he lights up all of heaven. You know, who he is and his glory just that emanates from him, lights it all up. He doesn't need suns, as in S-U-N-S. You know, <laughs> he doesn't need moons at night, you know, and he doesn't need stars to make the sky uh, be punctuated with some dots of light. You know, he lights everything up. And um, and so heaven's not just a place. Heaven is about the father. And what what Jesus is saying to, to his sons, his disciples, uh, he's saying, well, I, I want to I want to speak to you about the future. So we've looked at talked about what we hear from the Father about the future, what we see, you know, and, um, and, a good, and of course about uh, the strategies of going forward.
but our ultimate destination is the Father himself. <laughs> and, um, and so then he says, I go to prepare a place for you. In other words, you've got a place in the Father. This is actually what he's saying to them, all right? He's not just saying, you've, you know, there's all the imagery about heaven, you know, the, you know, the, the, the gates and the walls and the, you know, the, the, um, all, all the precious stones and gems and all of that and the, the streets of gold and, the, you know, and, and all the other stuff that, you know, that's in the Bible about heaven, um, except that all, all of that is imagery about how amazing heaven is because of the Father. <laughs> Yeah, because he lights it all up and he created all those things that the imagery uh, is about, you know, and all of heaven is about him and he's our destination. So, um, so the, the theology of the past where um, it, it was all about, well, Jesus, you know, the, the, the world's a mess. It's terrible. Um, when are you going to come and take us home and get us out of this horrible mess uh, so we can go to that beautiful place, you know? It's, it's not just about that. It's about the fact that um, heaven's going to be about the Father, and so the kingdom of heaven on earth is about the Father. <laughs> That's the primary focus of it all. And he's given his son all authority as the king of the kingdom, but he's also sent the Holy Spirit as the governor of the kingdom on earth to administer the affairs of the kingdom. He also has all authority because he's one the same as Jesus. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, uh, and so uh, this, this whole thing is about being sons of the Father. The future is about the Father. And what spiritual sons do, uh, spiritual fathers do, is they, they see who the Heavenly Father is. They see what the Heavenly Father's done and what He's doing. Um, they can see it in all kinds of ways, uh, but they speak what they see into their, the lives of their sons. They speak the future into their sons. And, um, and that's so important because... Uh, the sons of spiritual fathers need to know that all of us, our ultimate destiny is the Heavenly Father. That's our ultimate destination. And, um, and so Jesus says to the disciples here, where I go, you know. So they, they got it in a sense, right? Because he's saying in my father's house, not just in some place called heaven, you know, uh, but in my father's house. <clears throat> Uh, where you go, I know. They knew already from John 13 that he was going back to the Father. Uh, and then he said, and the way you know. Well, some of them needed a bit of help with that. <laughs> you see, this is what fathers do for their sons, is that they know in part, but fathers know more. Yeah? So Thomas, who, of course, was the, you know, the doubting disciple, Thomas said, well, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? But at least he was honest. At least he was transparent. He was open about it. And, and this is the relationship between fathers and sons. Because the, the way sons grow is by being honest about what they don't know and what they do know. You know, being honest about what needs to be clarified and, uh, and what they think they've got clear. And that level of transparency means that the spiritual father can actually increase the insight that a spiritual son has into our ultimate destination, who is the heavenly father himself. And, um, and so Jesus says, and by the way, here's, here's one of the verses again that we can get hung up on because of previous, um, you know, preconditioning about this verse. This is actually not a verse on evangelism. All right. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. We can apply it to evangelism. All right. And it's powerful in doing so, but that's actually not what Jesus was saying. What Jesus was saying was, I'm going to my father. <clears throat> um, I know what's in my father's house. Let me tell you a bit about it. Let me tell you a bit about what you can expect when you come to understand that the destination in all of this is the father himself. All right. And then he said, here's the key. The father of the son is the, is the way for the sons of that son who's become a father. Does that make sense? <laughs> So when Jesus said, I'm the way, he was saying, well, you've only learned about the Father really through me. Now, they had the Old Testament, but Jesus expounded stuff way beyond what the Pharisees did because he knew the Father like no one else knew him. And, um, and so when he says, I am the way, 
he was saying, well, um, through me, you're going to be able to actually, um, you know, achieve the destination because we're all going there to the father himself. And then he says, I am the truth. In other words, who I know the father to be is the truth that you will also come to know. Yeah. And then he says, I am the, the life. And of course, we all know that uh, there is no other life except from the Father. He's the source of all life. And so what Jesus is saying here is not just something that we use to, uh, you know, to tell somebody who's not a believer about how to get to heaven or about how to find salvation. In the context, Jesus is actually talking about the fact that, um, you know, that, that the, he was going back to the Father. The Father himself is the destination, not a place. All right, but the father himself, um, and it's only the place in the context of the fact that that's where the father is, <laughs> and um, and so in this life, it's all about our heavenly father. But as mature sons, we become fathers to others, and we can speak to our sons what we've come to hear and see and know and understand about our heavenly father, uh, so that they can what they can know that through us there is a way. To actually find him in greater measure. This is what Jesus was saying. And he was saying that he was, he's the example of a spiritual father who knows that the end destination is the, the heavenly father himself and that he is um, uh, he's secure in him because he knows he comes from him. And this is why it's important for us to not be born again us, but to be born from above us. <laughs> All right. Because Nicodemus said, how can I be born again? But Jesus said, you must be born from above. And you must be born of the water and the spirit. But you know, the church worldwide has taken Nicodemus's word, uh, 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 phrasing, and made that our identity. But I want to tell you something. I am not a born again person. I'm a born from above person. <laughs> and that's important. Just because just as Jesus said, I have come from the Father, we must also have the revelation that we've come from the Father. And that just as Jesus said, and this is the beginning of John 13, the, the chapter before this, the Father has put all things into my hands. In other words, everything I am and have, and all the abilities to do everything, uh, you know, to fulfill my assignment, everything he, he wants me to do, all comes from him. And uh, the, the end destination and the end product of it all is all about the Father. He's who we're returning to. And so this passage of Scripture is actually Jesus saying, well, because I know the Father more than you guys do, then I'm actually the way to him. <laughs> because I know his, more of his truth than, than you guys do, then I can bring you into his truth. Because I know... Um, that he is life more in greater ways than you do, then I can actually introduce you to dimensions of life in him. And so Jesus is actually talking about this, this whole principle that we're talking about, that um, uh, you know, sons mature to become fathers, you know, spiritual fathers, which is what Jesus did, of course. And, um, uh, and then they actually uh, are able to speak to their spiritual sons about what the future looks like, and the future looks like the Father Himself, the Heavenly Father, and uh, and everything that He is and everything that emanates from Him. And Jesus was saying that He's the conduit for the sons to the Heavenly Father. Now, I'm not saying that we are uh, that to the same extent, but what I'm saying is there's a principle here of spiritual fathering and of how sons relate to a spiritual father that is really important because spiritual fathers will be able to speak into their sons about what they know of the future, who is the, the heavenly father himself and everything that he's about uh, and be able to actually pass it on to their spiritual sons uh, so that they can see the future in, in clearer ways. And so, so this verse, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. This is not like, well, you need to get born again uh, and you need to believe in Jesus because he's the only way to God in heaven. That's not the terminology at all, and it's not the picture at all. It's all about the Father. <laughs> so to become mature sons of the Father is all about a spiritual father 
speaking about the Father, you know, the Heavenly Father and the future and what they've heard and seen and, and, um, and, and, the, and the ways forward in God and so on, so that the spiritual sons have a better way to the Heavenly Father, so that the spiritual sons have greater truth and clearer truth as far as connecting with their Heavenly Father, so that the spiritual sons, um, you know, know how to access greater dimensions of the life that comes from the Heavenly Father. And, and this is really what Jesus was saying. So then Jesus goes on and he says, if you'd known me, you would have known my father also. <laughs> All right, so in context of what we're talking about, this is very, very powerful. Because he's saying, well, you know, come on, guys, you know me pretty well. We live together. We walk from town to town together. You've heard me preach and teach time after time. You've seen me do miracles healings, deliverances, raising the dead, all the stuff. You've seen me, um, you know, exposing the Pharisees and dealing with all that stuff. And, you know, uh, and you know that I'm the king of the kingdom. Um, and, um, and all this is very real. But he's saying, if you, if you know me, well, then you know my father. Because everything you see in me and hear from me and know about me, um, it comes from my heavenly father. That's, that's pretty powerful, hey? I tell you what, though, um, for us as, um, you know, as people that have been redeemed out of a fallen state uh, and are becoming more and more, you know, like a heavenly father, going from glory to glory, according to the image of God, becoming more and more Christ-like, taking on more of his, you know, his nature, but also his grace upon us, his glory, weight of his glory upon us, uh, his authority, his power, all of these things. Um, God wants to use us uh, according to this principle. And while we might, might not see, it, see ourselves as in the same ballpark as the sinless son of God, the fact is we are sons of God. We're sons of our father in heaven. And I believe, well, we can see this pattern all the way through scripture, old, old um, covenant and new covenant. And so this is actually a pattern that God's always had in mind for his human creation. And that is that uh, we, we, um, we're born we become son, sons of a father who raises us to become a mature son uh, who, who then can produce sons himself. And of course, in, in, in the things of God, that, that same principle operates uh, when it comes to being spiritual fathers and spiritual sons. And, and this is the thing for spiritual fathers that we actually, um, I believe there is a dimension we can come to where we may not use these words, but in reality, our example is like what Jesus is saying, well, if you know me, you know my Father in heaven. Now, I don't say that lightly at all, but also there is a, you know, and some of you have heard me talk about this in the past, there is actual scriptural precedent for this. Because a number of times Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And mostly he was talking about how he fathered them. <laughs> and so spiritual fathers... Um, have a great weight of responsibility, but then they also carry great grace to be able to fulfill that responsibility. And um, because the responsibility actually is, well, my spiritual sons must actually find the Father through me until they can find the Father for themselves. <laughs> and even then, as, as we go forward and they're mature, mature spiritual sons, as a spiritual father, we'll always be ahead of them. So we'll always have stuff to speak about of the future into their lives to take them on the journey forward with us. And this is what Jesus was doing. And, um, and, he, and he says this, if you'd known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, why? Because he's laid this principle into place. All right? This is what his teaching is through these verses. He's laid the principle into place now. And he said, now, from now on, you know him and have seen him. Why? Because they saw him in Christ. <laughs> Incredible, hey? All right? Incredible. But then Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. You know, Philip did not get what Jesus just said at all. It went right over his head. <laughs> yeah, because he's just said, from now on, you know him and have seen him. So what does Philip say? I haven't seen the Father show him to us. <laughs> and that'll be a sufficient for us. At least he got that point. 
he realized that everything is in the Father. That will be sufficient for us. That'll be everything we need. If only we can see him. If only you can truly show us him. But Jesus has said, well, you begin to know him and see him through me. That's what Jesus was saying. And, and like I said, this is not just a salvation thing. This is, this is about uh, the maturing of spiritual fathers who raise sons to maturity to become fathers themselves who raise spiritual sons and, and so it goes, you know. Um, and, and this is what Jesus is talking about here to his disciples who were his spiritual sons. And at least Philip understood that if he would actually grasp who the heavenly father is, he'd have it. He'd be right. <laughs> And this is where spiritual sons have got to come to. They've got to come to that place where it's not about their performance. It's not about, um, you know, um, you know, whether they, you know, flow regularly in word of knowledge or whether they, um, you know, every person they pay for gets healed or, you know what I'm saying? It's not about all that stuff that we've been so conditioned to in a lot of ways. This is about the fact that um, the father wants to use us in the ways that he has destined for us. And he's the destination because he's where we've come from. And, um, and Christ is, you know, um, has sent us the Holy Spirit to reveal things to us. And one of the things that he's revealing to us is this thing about that we have spiritual fathers who see and know and understand and, and have the strategies from the Heavenly Father more than the sons do. But they are the way for the sons to come into those things. They are, they, they are the disseminators of the truth that actually helps to bring the sons come into those things. And they actually um, demonstrate and impart the life that the Heavenly Father has so the, the sons can come into those things as well. And this is what Jesus is saying. And there's times when the sons will say like Philip, well, you're saying I can see him in you, but I can't, so you, you better help me here. But if, if you can help me with this, well, I'll, I'll be okay. You know, I'll have everything I need because everything's in the Father. That's awesome, isn't it? And so, so, so Thomas, he was like, look, I have no clue. You know, where are you going? How do we know how to get there? You know, um, uh, you know, Thomas was a blonde, obviously. Hey, you know, totally clueless. Sorry to all the blondes if there are any in the room. <laughs> Glenn, blonde. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so Thomas was clueless, but Philip caught something that it's all about the Father, the Heavenly Father. And he said, I can't see it yet. So Lord, help me with this. Because I know that when I can see him the way you do, then everything will be okay. I'll, 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 I'll have caught it. And this is the principle of Heavenly Father, spiritual Father, spiritual sons. But Jesus says to, to Philip, have I been with you so long and yet you've not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. You know, and this is the stuff the Apostle Paul was talking about. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. In other words, if you can see, see the Father in me, then let's go this journey together. You know, um, and so much so that, you know, Paul, Paul said that there were things that he had seen in the spirit that he was forbidden to even speak about. So did he see and hear about the future? Yes, he sure did, you know. Did he, you know, have you know, great revelation of the father. He sure did. Um, but um, the, uh, uh, the amazing thing is here that he says, uh, how can you say, show us the father? Then he, and then he says this, this is his explanation. Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father in me? This complete entwining between son and the father is actually the foundation of it all. See, spiritual fathers, their lives have got to be complete in him, completely entwined in the heavenly father. And then spiritual sons have actually got to access this dimension and, and start to grow in this because then they'll find that through their spiritual father, there is a way forward. There is truth that they haven't known before and there's a dimension of life that's going to flow. Um, and, and it's going to point them always in the direction of the heavenly father. That's what verse six is talking about. And so Jesus goes on and says, the words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Why? Because I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. This is the Father talking through me, he's saying. The Father who dwells in me does the works. All right. And then he says this, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. 
and I wish I had more time because this is the, you know, th this is the crux of the matter here. Um, because we haven't understood the principles of heavenly fathers, spiritual fathers, spiritual sons, who are going to become spiritual fathers of spiritual sons, then most people in the body of Christ have believed him for the sake of the works. Because they haven't believed because they really see and understand that he's a representation of the heavenly father on earth. But you know, it's the same for spiritual fathers. I believe that we are going to see more and more around the world, the emergence of spiritual fathers who people are going to say, oh, I actually see the heavenly father in that person. And I'm getting revelation through that person and coming to know the heavenly father even more. Um, I don't believe just because of the miracles. I don't just believe, believe because of the great teaching. I don't believe just because I want to guarantee my, you know, my afterlife de destiny, you know. Um, I, I don't just believe because I want to be blessed or because I need God's help. But I believe because I've seen the Father. And I first saw the Father in my spiritual father. And now I've, I've matured and I can see the Father for myself. <laughs> this is what Jesus was talking about in this whole passage. And, um, and so the shift that's got to happen uh, and by the way, the shift's got to happen firstly for fathers um, and for leaders who are instructors and not yet fathers too, is that, uh, you know, we've got to actually uh, believe because we come to see and know and understand who the father is to us and that he's in us and we're in him and that everything flows from him, not only to us, but through us. And, um, uh, and that, we actually then can become an example to others of how to find the same place in the heavenly father. In that sense, we become the way to it. We, we become the truth of it to them. We also become the source of life for them to access this stuff in God, in the heavenly father. And because um, we've got to shift people from just believing for all the other reasons, people have actually got to believe because they actually come to know the father. And because they actually see the father in spiritual fathers and then ultimately come to see him for who he really is for themselves and come to know him for who he really is for themselves. And, um, and so this, this is, this is pretty powerful stuff. There's so much in here. I could probably do a whole conference out of this passage. Um, but, um, uh, that's enough for tonight.